incapacitate a bad guy with an MP5. Then come up with a nifty catchphrase like yippee-key. <laughs> you're making nunchucks out of the magazines and you're sharpening your ID on the countertop. <laughs> You were headed home after a long-awaited ski trip, and you were waiting on your flight in the Anchorage airport. They call for boarding to begin, and suddenly there's an explosion. <laughs> after the explosion and the dust settles, you hear what sounds like gunfire in the distance. It's wintertime in Anchorage, and it's minus two degrees outside. Minus two degrees Fahrenheit is freezing cold, and all you have on you is what you can carry onto the plane. What do you do? Option number one is find the closest exit and get out of that building as fast as you possibly can. Option two is find a safe place to hide. Option number three is improvise some sort of makeshift weapon and plan on defending yourself. Last option, option number four, is call 911 and wait for help to arrive. Before we move on, in the comment section, I want you to tell me, number one, two, three, or four, which of those options, if you only had to pick one, the first one that comes to mind, which one would you do? I will wait. Bumper's a little small to sit on without falling off. Clearly he's crazy. That guy is nuts. He is. He's lazy under here and it's kind of nice. It's cozy, you know? Option number one was to find the closest exit and get out of the building. So in this scenario, the temperature is minus two degrees Fahrenheit. And that is one reason why you may potentially not want to leave the building. So it depends on how you're dressed. If you're dressed appropriately for outdoor activities in minus two, then maybe that'd be a smart choice and that'd be the way to go. Maybe it's the way to go no matter what. Maybe you can flee the building as fast as possible and run to shelter in a nearby building. Because if you're at an airport, chances are it's not the only building in the area. I, I've been to the Anchorage airport, but it's been a long time. So I don't exactly remember what it looks like there, but I'm sure there's other buildings that you could escape to and possibly find some shelter there away from the chaos. So finding the closest exit, knowing I generally like to know where the closest exit is at all times when I'm in public places and busy populated areas. Where's the closest way to get out of this place, this, this box that we're trapped in? Keep an eye on that exit and get to it as quickly as possible and get your way out of there. So in this situation, that might be a smart move if you're dressed appropriately and or potentially you can find some shelter close by. Option number two was just to hide. Run away and hide. Find some barricaded position where you can just be under the radar and potentially these gunshots, the, the people that are firing those firearms won't be able to find you. That's definitely an option. And depending on your situation and your level of fitness and training and abilities, that might be the smartest option is just to run and hide. Find some place where you can lay low and wait this thing out. The third option was to improvise some sort of weapon and plan on defending yourself. I like this option, and based on your, your fitness level, your abilities, your training, I think this could be a real potential option for you. Going up against somebody with a firearm, or a rifle, semi-automatic, fully automatic firearms, is going to be a tough go. Um, you're going to have to set up some sort of ambush so you can have a little bit of a, a the upper hand in a situation where you can get the drop on somebody. But but improvising some sort of weapon like this, for example, here's a small little backpack, right? And if you filled this water bottle with water and you stuck it down on the bottom of the bag, this could be a pretty awesome bludgeoning weapon right here if it was completely full of water, that is. Even empty, that steel water bottle would be... It would be devastating if you got whacked in the melon with that. So I like to call this weapon the old lady's handbag. It's my favorite. So, <laughs> but this is just one option. There's all sorts of things that you could improvise as a weapon. I mean, a chair, uh, anything. You pick up anything that, that could be used as some sort of club or something like that. Or, or this right here. This is good. I've got a buddy that always carries a cane onto flights because obviously you can't carry weapons onto planes, knives and guns and stuff. But he carries a cane whenever he has to fly, which is very rare, But and he doesn't need a cane. He just uses it as his weapon. But if you had a crutch like this, my wife's crutch that she's using right now, this would be an improvised weapon that you could do some damage with. Oh, shameless plug, this is a PNW Bushcraft pack that I designed. If you'd like to buy one of these, go to pnwbushcraft.com and get one of these awesome cinch packs. And that way you can bludgeon somebody <laughs> at the airport with the uh, old lady's handbag. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> the last option is to call 911. Now, everybody assumes that everybody else has called 911. 
And a lot of times in emergency type situations, people panic, people freak out, and they just forget to do the basics. So calling 911 is probably a good idea if it's convenient and you've got some cover, you're not immediately in danger. Having 911 on the phone and, and giving them some information on what's going on in this airport is probably going to be really, really helpful for the emergency uh, respond first responders to come out. When the police come out, it's whatever intel they have on what's going on inside is going to be really, really helpful. And you want backup. Bring all the backup. So I think calling 911 is a really, really smart solution if it's not you're not in, in immediate danger. Get to someplace safe and then make that call. But on that note, don't rely on it 100%. I mean, obviously, there's a time delay, right? You can't just expect 911, call 911 and help is immediately there. It's gonna take some time for them to get in there. They're gonna to have to formulate some sort of plan. They're probably gonna be staging themselves outside the building, figuring out the, the appropriate response. And there's gonna be some, some time delay there. And you're gonna to have to solve your own problems in that first, first stages of something like this. They're not just gonna be rushing in immediately. I really enjoy these types of scenarios. It's really fun for me to go through these types of scenarios and think through what I would do in these types of situations. And I think you guys enjoy this as well. So we're gonna go through some of the comments. There's a lot of comments on this one. Uh, we posted this, this one this morning and there's uh, 54 comments here. So let's see what people say about this situation and what they would do. Golfing girl, <laughs> 3255. She says, that's a tough one. Exiting the building could be a problem with an ambush. So I'm guessing she's saying that, you know, that if you exit a building, there could be bad guys waiting at that exit for people to try to escape out that exit. So I guess that's a, that is a definitely a, a potential situation. I think improvise a weapon, stay out of sight, assess the situation while putting on all the clothes in your bag in the event that you end up in the cold. That's really smart. Everything that you got, if you got jackets and other ex extra layers and stuff in your carry-on luggage, then put all that stuff on if you got to get outside. This is a really, really smart idea. Material 311 says, just running away is mob mentality. And I think that's true. People will just freak out and panic and just run. And whatever direction everybody's running in, it's like cattle. Whatever the lead cow does, the rest of them follow in this, in this crazy um, rush of, of human stampedes. So it's not always the smartest idea to go with the flow. So, and people will run by. I've seen videos of people running right by emergency exits on their way out of places in, when these emergency situations happen. Not always this kind of event, obviously, but people will run right by exits on their way out because they're, they're freaked out and just following the crowd. On the other hand, on the other hand, there's a reason why herds survive by staying in the herd, right? When the gazelles, when the antelope, when the wildebeest are being chased by the lions or whatever, they stay in the herd for safety because there's safety in numbers. It's when one of them gets peeled off from the group that that is when the predators pounce on them. So potentially that herd mentality, that's an instinctual thing for us to do is to stay in that group in the masses just for protection. I don't know about in all situations, but yeah, I mean, if a single, if you see this massive crowd and, and, and the bad guys are just firing in amongst them, I mean, that's a devastating, really sad situation, obviously. But if you've got a single person that catches your eye running off to the side, you've got this mass of people running, mass of people running, and there's one individual running in the opposite direction, that person, that one person might become a, a target because the eye will catch that movement. I don't know, something to think about. User FE2L5RW4 and something or other says, living where it also gets well below zero every year, I can assure you everyone is overestimating your survival chances outside underdressed in that temperature. And I think that's true. Negative two degrees Fahrenheit is really cold, especially if you're not acclimated to those, those temperatures. If you're underdressed and you're wearing whatever it is that's comfortable inside the air conditioned, well heated airport, you will not last very long in minus two degrees outside. That is gonna to be tough and you might succumb to hypothermia before the bad guys even have a chance to get to you. And maybe that was their plan, just to push everybody outside. Who knows? Christopher Pike has an has a interesting comment here. He's kind of thinking outside the box and I like that, outside the box thinking is, after getting to safety, so getting out of the building in safety, it says find the nearest vehicle and break into it. Strip the cushions and make makeshift coat with the seat padding so you can get some sort of insulation, right? Um, he says you don't need something fancy, you just need layers to trap in some body heat. And I think that's really smart, and that's some outside the box type thinking. I think that's good. Almeria6753 says if you run, that makes you a target. 
find what you can and prepare to defend your life. So again, maybe running, you know, makes you stand out from the crowd when you should just be lying in wait, planning your ambush with your improvised weapon of sorts. You uh, instead you take off running and that makes you an immediate target. So I don't know. That's a good point though. There's a possibility of there being strength in numbers. So if you've got one, two, three, four, five terrorists, whatever it is, even if they're heavily armed, a group could definitely overwhelm a few individuals, even if they're heavily armed. It's it's very possible. But what but what you're asking of the group is to sacrifice their lives for the greater good. And that's gonna be really difficult to do. That's difficult to do with trained individuals. It's really, really difficult to do with a chaotic, panicked mob of regular, average, everyday people in an airport. M4 Airsofter says, always carry a warm layer in your carry-on. I think that's really smart. You should dress appropriately for the weather conditions outside. And if it's too hot to wear that big poofy jacket, whatever it is that you, you have uh, in your carry-on, that's fine, just put it in your carry-on. Make sure you have that with you so if you do have to be forced outside for a period of time that you're not going to freeze to death in the short term. This is my favorite comment of the day and it's from Untitled Name 1703 <laughs> So, obviously, first, you should find and incapacitate a bad guy with an MP5. Then, come up with a nifty catchphrase like, Yippee-kee! <laughs> or something. And then start taking out bad guys one by one with urban gorilla techniques. Who says she, who says yippee key? He's seriously been watching <laughs> Die Hard. He said, didn't he say yippee kaye? Yippee kaye, mother, -ki mother effer. <laughs> Sounds like die. My get home bag is a carry on with weapons adapted for TSA. I'm be interested to see what those look like. I wonder what a what a TSA approved weapon looks like. Obviously, nothing is really TSA approved, but I wonder what that uh, what he's got going on there. Getting away from the threat has the best chances. My down puffy buff gloves and merino wool layers packed down, taking up one third of the room in a small carry on backpack, a poncho and a lightweight quilt, meds, lighter battery pack for phone. Try traveling without a cell phone these days. So yeah, this guy sounds like, this guy sounds like he's extremely prepared. And again, I, I'd love to see what his uh, weapons adapted for TSA look like. Hey, ma! ma! There's a weird looking cat out of here. <laughs> I wanna pick a no fight with Lucy. I don't wanna start no fight with Lucy. <laughs> Mark Williams says you need to get off the X, but you need to call 911 because you'd be surprised how few people actually do this. That's why if you're in some sort of first responder type class, you're learning CPR, whatever it is, they tell you to assign somebody to call 911. So before you begin your compressions and all the stuff, you say, hey, you guy right there in the red shirt, make sure they acknowledge you. You say, you call 911. You, make, you don't just say somebody call 911 because everybody will assume that somebody else has done it. Amy King says, pull the fire alarm, which if there's an explosion, the fire alarm's probably, are, it's probably already going off. I would, I would guess, I don't know that to be a fact, but most likely it's probably already going off. And it says, take note of where the gunfire and explosion is and go the opposite direction. That is not always that easy to do. I know this from personal experience, like hunting, for example, I like to turkey hunt. And you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to locate where the sound is coming from, depending on the terrain that you're in. It's really hard. It might sound like it's over here and you, you could swear it, but really it's coming from over here and it's just bouncing around and echoing around. And inside buildings and inside structures and urban areas, it's probably even more difficult if I had to guess. So relying on your hearing to know where the sound, where the, where the, the uh, disaster is coming from, where the danger is, might not be that great of a tactic. I think if my voice was like this, I'd get a lot of views. No, you wouldn't. For a you moment. You think people would like it? No, piss them off. That would be annoying. I think it'd be annoying. Yeah. Start talking like that and see what people think. Happiness is a warm gun. Philip Pierce, 9680, says. <laughs> Happiness is a warm gun. Praetorian371 has some interesting comments, but one of the things he says is that it's also just in perspective. Our kids go outside for recess until minus 20 where he lives. I think he lives in Alaska. So minus 20. If it was minus 20, they would cancel school here, 100%. Everything would shut down and come to a stop if it was minus 20 here. Uh, Jeff McGovern5674 asks some questions, which I think are valid. 
He said, it depends. Um, am I alone? Am I with my family? How close are the exits? Um, are, the gun, are the gunmen visible or not? Can I rally up a group of people to fight like they did in Flight 93? How many gunmen are there? Is there a fire alarm to pull? Is there a fire extinguisher nearby to use as a weapon? Fire extinguisher is a good weapon. I forgot about that one. Um, because you could spray it in this person's face to distract them and then club them with it. That's that's a good one. Forgot about that. Does does the airport have armed security or police? There are a lot of variables that determine actions, and that's exactly right. And we're all in some in a situation like this. We're all going to be expected to make perfect decisions in seconds based on the very, very little bit of information that we have. And everyone around us will judge us for the decisions that we make. All the armchair quarterbacks will come out and they'll say, well, I would have done this and I'd have done that. They'll watch the replay videos on the surveillance cameras and they'll say, I would have been here and I'd have done this and I'd have made that decision. Well, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. It just depends. Everybody's gonna react differently to this type of situation and everybody's gonna be faced with, with fear and anxiety. They're gonna have lots of questions, a lot more questions than they'll have answers and they'll have to make their own decisions based on the information that they have, their abilities, their skills, the equipment that they have. A lot of things are gonna come into play here. This guy's intense, Wilderness Hermit, 2126. Good grief. He says, I've learned a long time ago that every, everything you could lay your hands on could be used as a weapon. And that's pretty much true. If you could pick it up, it's kind of a weapon. If you could pick it up and throw it or whack somebody with it, it's a weapon. It doesn't matter what it is, your ID or driver's license can cut a throat like a knife. My goodness, I don't think that's true. A uh, driver's license is not very sharp. Uh, it's not going to be anywhere near like a knife. I don't. I wouldn't count on that. You might scratch somebody, but I don't think you're going to really cause any massive damage with a with an ID. I don't know. I could be wrong. Magazines can be turned into nunchucks. <laughs> I can see it now in the in the uh, the store. The uh, what's the store called at the airport? It's the one with all the news. It's got a uh, what's the name in the comment section? Tell me what the name of the store is that has the news in the name of the store. Anyway. You're making nunchucks out of the magazines and you're getting and you're sharpening your ID on the countertop. <laughs> what? Grimjet3601 says, go outside and make snow angels, then sign your art with your pee. <laughs> After that, fly away on a magical beast called Falcor. What? <laughs> Grimjet, I like your style. <laughs> 06 Thomas McMullen, go to the plane, which you are about to board, or the baggage, and find your bag, get your gun with magazines in it, then call 911 and make your way out. The chances of in this situation of you finding your bag, so slim. Oh man, I mean, there's piles and piles of luggage in these, in the storage, the cargo areas of these planes. Really, really tough to get in there. Really tough to find your specific bag and then get all your gear. I mean, the chances of that, it would take forever and it's just probably not a very smart tactic in my opinion. You do you. James White 465 says, is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? I'm in America, bro. We don't do Celsius or the stupid communist metric system. We measure things in inches and other arbitrary measurements that don't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> but it's so much simpler. Water boils at 100 degrees and freezes at zero. Shut up. It's Fahrenheit. <laughs> Emmanuel Roth says sweep the leg. That's good. Good tactic. Uh, J. Klopp says die. <laughs> Just like 99% of civilians who think they'd be able to handle this because they watch YouTube and have cool gear. Yeah. Nameless One says all of the above. And I think that's probably an accurate thing you would do a combination of a lot of these different things and at all kind of the same time you'd be juggling you wouldn't just do one of those things and hope that would work out running and hiding making improvising some sort of weapon set, setting up some sort of ambush i think would be a smart choice getting out as fast as possible getting out of there and getting to a safer location i think would probably be the smartest tactic if you if it's accessible if it's possible and you don't have to pass through an immediate danger area to do that i think that would be smart Megan Donahue says, I wouldn't be in that situation in the first place. Apparently, Megan is not a skier. Anyway, guys, I really do appreciate you watching. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't done so already. Please leave lots of comments. If you haven't already cast your vote, what you would do in this situation, please do in the comment section. And I cannot wait to see you on the next one.
I'm Jason Salyer with Survival Dispatch. As a Survival Dispatch insider, you'll be able to gain the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. They'll provide crucial information on such things as stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans. You will receive specific actionable plans. You can deliver proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safely.